Good morning. Good morning, Temple of Faith. Good morning. Hey, Deborah, I think I see you up there in the corner. How you doing? How you doing? We've been faithfully praying for your mother. We prayed for your mother uh, last week uh, at Bible study uh, as well. So we'll certainly be doing that. Uh, let us begin in prayer. Father God, please open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits so that we may receive the word of God on today. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are starting a little late. We certainly apologize so that we give people a chance to um, get into the room here. Okay. Okay. I can't see the com I can't see who's here on that screen. Uh, I have to look. Good morning, Tammy T. Lee. Good morning, Deaconess Clayton. Good morning, Deborah. So glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, I want to begin with the prayer for Deborah's mother and Deacon Clayton's mother. Father God, we pray this morning that you would be with Deborah's mother, strengthen her mind, her body, her spirit. Thank you for good doctors, good nurses, and good medicines. Please strengthen the body of Deacon Clayton's mother. We thank you for good doctors, good nurses, good medicine. We all are in your hands. We all are day to day, and we depend upon your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, man, we have been rocking and rolling with uh, this series on um, upgrades. And, and God led me two weeks ago to the story of Abraham. So that's what we've been preaching on Sunday morning. So I want to call your attention to uh, Genesis, the 13th chapter, Genesis, the 13th chapter, Genesis, the 13th chapter. And I want to start at verse number one. Verse number one. Let me check something here on my other screen. I have to be very careful with the way that this camera is now set up. So give me just a second. Okay. There we go. I can now say good morning, Kimberly Miles Cameron. Kimberly, guess where I was on Valentine's Day? Mm-hmm. Guess where I was on Valentine's Day? Genesis, the 13th chapter, verse number one. New International Version was still in the life of Abram before he becomes Abraham. So Abram went up from Egypt. Remember last week he got in trouble in Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had and Lot went with him. Abram, notice it, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. From the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel. To the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier, and where he had first built an altar, there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, but the land could not support both of them while they stayed together. This is the most important part of this story I'm going to teach you this morning, but the land could not support them while they stayed together for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together and quarreling arose between Abram's herders and lots. That's the, that's the most important part of the story this morning. The Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land at the time. Verse eight. So Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part, most important part of the whole story today. Here it is, right here, verse nine. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zor was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Most important part of the story, verse 11. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Verse 14, the Lord said to Abram that the lot had parted from him. Most important part of the story. We see for the third or fourth time the word parted. After lot had parted from him, look around where you are, to the north and to the south, to the east and the west. All the land that you see, I will give you and your offspring forever. 
I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar towards the Lord. I want to teach this I want to preach this morning, teach, preach this Sunday, I'm preaching. I want to preach this morning from the subject. Upgrade cuts. Upgrade cuts. I need three people to type on the screen so I know that you're with me. Upgrade cuts. Upgrade cuts. Upgrade cuts. Come on, put that on the screen. Uh, upgrade cuts. Uh, uh, Genesis, the 13th chapter, 1 through 14. Upgrade cuts. Upgrade cuts. Upgrade. I see it. Kimberly Miles Cameron. Upgrade cuts. Deaconess Clayton. Upgrade cuts. German. Upgrade cuts. I had the privilege of speaking at the place where I worked for 15 years of my life, the Georgia State Capitol. I had to speak on the Alpha Day at the Capitol, and because I left the Capitol in the right way, I still have Senate and House floor back privileges. I can go into the House, the floor of the Georgia House, and the Senate, which was my last job. I can put on my badge and walk into the Senate. I, I went to see some colleagues before it was my time to speak. And one of the things that I did in the Lieutenant Governor's office, I worked on the budget. That's called the Appropriations Committee. Every dollar that's allocated in the state of Georgia from the state of Georgia, I worked on that particular budget. Uh, so what happened, we couldn't put keep everything in the budget. We had what was called budget cuts, budget cuts. That meant, uh, Lynn Acre, that we would have to cut some money away from the budget or move some money from one line item to another. So all programs did not get, good morning, Deacon S. Hodge, all programs did not get funded. So we had budget cuts. If you want to lose weight, you have to cut back on carbohydrates. <laughs> if you want to have your mind sharpened, you have to cut out junk going into your mind. Life is about strategic cuts. Somebody type that on the screen, strategic cuts, strategic cuts, strategic cuts, strategic cuts. If something is, uh, I, 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 I was watching a movie one time, um, The Perfect Storm, and, and they were caught in a storm and they were, they were cutting the anchor to try to get away. In life, you got to know when to cut. That's right, Tammy. Tammy, you work in an industry where you have to have budget cuts. Okay, uh, we, we used to, when we would cut the budget in the state of Georgia, we would call that um, uh, cutting the fat and leaving the lean. Make that budget lean. In life, if you're going to get upgrades, you got to make certain cuts. If you're going to go to the next level of living, you've got to make certain cuts. So th th this up, uh, this th this is why I'm calling this message, Kimberly. I'm so glad you're feeling better. This is why I'm calling this message uh, Upgrade Cuts. Because what we're going to find out, yes, three weeks ago when we started this series, God asked Abram to leave and he was going to bless him more than he's ever been blessed. Remember, Abram was already rich when he meets God. Abram gets in trouble in Egypt last week because he tells a lie. And now it's time for Abram to make some cuts. Let me, I'm going to prick and probe your psyche. Can you make the necessary cuts to be a better man? Can you make the necessary cuts to be a better woman? Can you make the necessary cuts to increase your spirituality? Can you cut out the foolishness? My grandma said, boy, you play all the time. You need to cut out some of that foolishness. Cut out all that talking. Tim, you ever heard the, the seasoned saints in the country? You better cut that out now, boy. You better cut that out. You ever heard the seasoned saints when they got ready to whoop you? I'm going to cut your tail up. I'm going to cut your tail up. Hold your hand up if you're familiar with those country colloquial terms that I grew up with. Well, you better cut that mess out. You better cut that junk out. I'm finna, you, you done cut up, so I'm going to tear your tail up. <laughs> Can you make the... <laughs> Tammy, I know she... Tammy, I know Miss Reedy may stay on cutting you cutting your tail up. I know it. Because you... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, Tammy. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Kimberly, you grew up privileged. You don't know nothing. You can't relate to me and Tammy, your old bougie butt. You grew up in Atlanta. You ain't grew up in Dublin and Washington, Georgia. So, 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 Abram, Deborah, get out of here. You're in Milwaukee. Uh, so, 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 there is no city in Enfield. So, so, listen, Deacon S. Clayton, did y'all go to Detroit to see your mother-in-law? So, Abram is now being pushed by God to make a cut. 
Let me tell y'all something this morning. God will make life so uncomfortable that you will finally make the cut. God won't force the cut. But he'll make stuff around you so uneasy, so uncomfortable, so unpleasant that you will be forced to make a cut. This is what happens. This, okay, be safe. Or y'all driving or flying. Be safe, be safe. Listen, so here we open up here in verse 1, 13th chapter of Genesis, New International Version. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev. If you're going to grow, you cannot stay where you are. If you're going to grow, you cannot do what you've always done. If you're going to grow, you got to go new places, new ideals. Somebody type on the screen, new ideals. You got to have a new mindset. You got be safe driving, be safe. Father God, we pray for traveling grace from Atlanta to Detroit as Deacon Clayton goes to see his mother and Deaconess Clayton's to see her mother-in-law. No hurt, harm, or dangers, angels, and protect them. In Jesus' name, amen. You, If you're going to grow, you got to take risk. Growth involves risk. Two people put that on the screen. Growth involves risk. 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 Amen, German. Growth involves risk. You, you remember uh, in coming to America when the young lady found out that Hakeem was really a prince and he was living below his means because he wanted her to love him for who he was uh, and not his money. And, and she's on the train. She's heartbroken. So what, what, what happens is a lady is chewing gum in Queens on the train. She said, take a chance. Take a chance. Y'all remember that line in coming to America? Take a chance. You got to take a chance on your future. You got to take a chance. I'm looking at retirement. Now, I'm not going to retire to sometime around 70. That's 12 years. I started looking at new investments last night. I started looking at AI investments on the stock market. I started looking at, like I mentioned last week, that Rachel sent me $100 for my birthday uh, gift. Uh, I, every All unexpected money that I get, I put that, you know, they, I, I can agree with, I, I can relate to Fonnie Woods and her daddy. I put all extra money in a safe. I put all my extra money, in, I don't put it in the bank, I don't put it nowhere else. I put it in a safe. So I'm taking a chance on where I want to live when I'm 70. I'm taking a chance on how I want to have passive income when I retire. So, so you got to take a chance. Growth does not come by sitting still. Growth comes by taking a chance. I would never become an accomplished scuba diver if I only talked about scuba diving. I had to go get in the water. I had to go train for it. I had to go train for it. I, I, when you train for it, this is how it looks. That's, oh, oops, 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 oops. When you train for it, that's how it looks. When you train for it, that's how it looks. Every day I look at my screensaver. I can see myself diving. And then I never forget my foundation. This is my foundation. Every day I see my grandmother on my phone. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. So you can't just talk about something. You've got to take action. you got to. So the Bible says Abraham went up from Egypt. Abram wanted to stay in Egypt, but God made it so uncomfortable, he had to get up out of there. Tammy T. Lee, know when to get up out of there. Deaconess Hodge, know when to get up out of there. Deborah, know when to get up out of there. Deaconess Clay, know when to get up out of there. Jarman, know when to get up out of there. Lynn Acre in Rail, Georgia, know when to get up out of there. Some of you have wasted many years because you stayed in the wrong place too long. I need a show of hands. I need somebody to be honest with me. Hold your hand up if you wasted time because you stayed with the wrong person too long, the wrong job too long, or in the wrong place too long. Up, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I once stayed in a relationship that I knew was dead, but I had to strategically decide how to get out of there. Let me see your hand up if you stayed with the wrong person too long, if you stayed in the wrong situation too long, and a job too long. You got to get up out of there. It's in the Bible. So Abram went up. That means Abram got... Tammy, you testifying today, girl. Tammy, you back in North Carolina or you watching on the road? Jeremy said, hands up. Thank you, Deaconess Clayton. Know when to go. Y'all always talking about, God gave me discernment. Well, you need to use it discernment to get up out that situation. Not situation. Tammy, in Washington, Georgia, season saying says, situation, situation. Ah. <laughs> Deaconess Hodge said, hands up. Okay, so he went up from Egypt to the Negev. With his wife and everything he had and Lot went with him. Emphasis on Lot. I'm home to the end of my... Very good, Tammy. 
Abram had been very wealthy in livestock and seven gold. Now look, Abram ain't broke. It is not the will of God for you to be broke. You may not be a millionaire, but you don't have to be broke. It's not the will of God for you to live check, paycheck to paycheck. Manage your money well. Watch what you spend and how you spend it and when you spend it. Look, people say, well, he always got on nice suits. I buy suits on sale. I look for coupons. Guess what I got? I did a coupon from my grandmother. My grandmother. Live within your means or below your means. Don't ever tell anybody how much you got and what you got. Keep them guessing. Keep them guessing. Keep them guessing. Abram was already rich. God had promised to make him wealthier. May God expand what you got. May God expand what you got, Deaconess Hodge. May God expand what you got, Deborah. May God expand what you got, German. May God expand what you got, Mayor Willie Barnes. May God expect what you, expand what you got, Tammy T. Lee. God is a God of expansion. Look at Tammy said, exactly. Y'all, did y'all know Tammy had a crush on Usher? She thought she was Alicia Keys at the halftime show that Usher was holding his arms. So, so, so look at this. Abram had become very wealthy. Even though he messed up, in Egypt, he blew up some more. Isn't it amazing how God can turn your mess into a miracle? <laughs> I need three people who are paying attention to write on the screen, from mess to miracle. From mess to miracle. I've been looking for this for a month. And there it is. Let me put it right. Let me go put this over here. So, From mess to miracle. 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 Come on, put that on the screen from mess to miracle. Kimberly, from, my grandma told me that. Keep them guessing. That's right. Your grandma told you wisely. Told you wisely. Fonnie Willis, daddy told her to put the cash in the, in the house in the safe. From mess to miracle. From mess to miracle. Living witness. Amen. Amen. You ain't the only living witness, uh, Tammy. So, so from mess to miracle. That's right, Deacon. That's how God expands what you got. Verse 3, from the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier, where he first built an altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Look at this. He went from place to place until God led him to the right place. God will always lead you where you need to be. The only times I've gotten off track is where I, when I went where God didn't tell me to go. Ouch. The only time I got off track, I went where God didn't tell me to go. So when you, when, you have, when you get up the courage to leave the situation, when you get up the courage to leave the bad situation, God will lead you to a better situation. God will lead you to the right situation. Uh, how many of you seen God take you from a bad situation to the right situation? <laughs> I'm living in the season of right situation right now. My life is being manifested in the right season of my life. My life is being manifested in the right season of my life. My life is being manifested in the right season of my life. He leads him to the place between Bethel, Beth, Bethel and Ai. And what does Abram do when God puts you in the right situation? I hear you, Kim. I know what you're talking about, baby. I know. When God puts you in the right situation... You need to pray and give praise. Because look at verse number four. And where he had built the first altar, then Abram calling him, look, God brings him right back to his spiritual altar. <laughs> when you get out, you need to praise. When you get out of a bad situation, you need to praise God. When God delivers you to a better job, give God praise. When God changes your mindset, give God praise. When God shifts your wealth, check your finances, give God praise. Abram goes into a worship mode. He's rich, but he worships. He's the Bill Gates of his day, but he worships. He's the Elon Musk of his day, but he worships. He's a Warren Buffett, uh, the, uh, good, the wizard of, of uh, Omaha, the, the, he, but the guru of Omaha, but he worships. I dare you not to give praise. Tell me, your shout ought to be loud every now and then because he took you from a temp employee to the what? Vice president. <laughs> Abram went back. He look, he took him back home where he first set up a tent and he worshiped. Washington, Georgia, that is my, my psychological spiritual tent. It is there that my grandmother shaped me. It is there. That's why I talk about my grandmother all the time. It is there where she shaped me. It is there. That's my, that's my, that's my Bethel AI. 
That's my Bethel AI. You need, you need, you need to give God praise when he gets you up out of there. Don't act like you got up, got up out of there by yourself. No, no, God got you up out of there. You were not strong enough to do it. You were not smart enough to do it. You were too lazy to do it. You were too emotional to do it. So when you get out of there, praise. <laughs> I need two people who are paying attention, just two, to write on the screen. Praise is my reaction to my deliverance. <laughs> praise is my reaction to my deliverance. Praise is my reaction to my deliverance. Praise is my reaction to my deliverance. Verse 5. Now Lot, here comes Lot into the story. Now, now the writer, the Yahweh's writer, the Eloist writer, whoever writes Genesis, he strategically lets us know in verse 1 that he introduced Lot as a character. And now he's going to develop the character of Lot. Kimberly, praise is my reaction to my deliverance. Tammy, praise is my reaction to my deliverance. German, praise is my reaction to my deliverance. William Murphy had that song many years ago, Praise is What I Do, with Shekinah Glory. Now, look, now, verse 5, now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. A Lot grew up because, blew up because he was around Abram. The promise was not made to Lot, but Lot grew, blew up because he was around Abram. You need to hang with the right people if you want to blow up. You need to be around the right people if you want to be smarter. You need to be around the right people who are making money so you can make money. You need to be in the right atmosphere. <laughs> Some of y'all need an atmospheric change. You need to be in a better environment. You need to be in a non-toxic environment. You need to be in a non-stressful environment. If you're the smartest person in the room on every subject, you need to change rooms. <laughs> Lot gets the crumbs from Abram and they blow him up. Oh, who you're connected to makes all the difference in your world. Who you're connected to makes all the difference in your world. I have zero positive people in my life. I have zero toxic people in my life. I have zero negative people in my life. I have zero negative people. I have zero competitive people in my life. My circle is small. My circle is tight and right. And Spencer, my circle is positive. Look at this. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds. But the earth, but the land could not support them while they stayed together. For their possession was so great, they were not able to stay together. And quarreling broke out. Quarreling broke out. Quarreling. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Look, the land could not support all of them while they stayed together for their possession. God sometimes makes a situation uncomfortable so he can promote you. <laughs> Before you have to make a cut, God will give you signs. Before you have to make a move, God will give you a sign. Before you have to change jobs, God will give you a sign. Before you have to move on, God will give you a sign. Before you have to part ways out of your daily, God will give you a sign. Look at this. The Bible says the land could not support both of them. I'm going to mess y'all up right here. Sometimes you outgrow other people and it's okay. Ouch. Sometimes you outgrow other people and that's okay. Every, that doesn't mean you're better than the other person. That means y'all just can't make it. That means y'all just can't make it. That means y'all not supposed to be together. That means y'all just cannot do it. That means y'all cannot do it. They cannot do it. And look at this. Look at this. Abram. Look at this. Look at this. The land could not support them. God will allow growth to occur so you can move on. Somebody not listening. Somebody not paying attention. Sometimes God allows growth so you can move on. Everybody that you started out with is not still in your life. Everybody that you started out with is not still in your life. Some people have to be left behind. Here I go. Some people got to get cut. <laughs> Sometimes you got to cut the fat. Look at this. They, they could not stay together. Separation can be a blessing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
I need two people, because ain't but two of y'all paying attention. I need two people right on the screen. Separation can be a blessing. Two people right on the screen. Separation can be a blessing. Sometimes separation is the best thing that can happen to you. Separation teaches you, you don't need who you thought you needed, and you don't need what you thought you needed. <laughs> separation can be a blessing. Separation can be a blessing in disguise. The Bible says it got so bad and they argue between Abram's herders and Lot's husband. Herders. Now let me tell y'all something. Lot was Lot was the nephew of Abram. <laughs> German said, Oh, yeah, separation can be a blessing, Deborah. Are you dealing separation can be a blessing? You sometimes your wagon is hooked up to the wrong horse. <laughs> Kimberly, put the horse emoji up. Put the horse emoji up. Kim, I was talking to you last week. You were not here, but I forgot your parents use your account in the live stream. Look, put the horse emoji up. Sometimes you have hooked your cart to the wrong horse. Let me see your hand, because both my hands are up. Let me see your hands up if you hooked your horse to the wrong cart. <laughs> I'm going to wait for that horse emoji to jump on the screen. There they go. Let me tell y'all sometime. Sometimes you got to make these to get an upgrade from God. You got to make cuts. You got Tammy, <laughs> Tammy, <laughs> Tammy, Tammy, I'm, I'm going to block you from this live stream. And you know why, Tammy, Tammy, I'm going to block if you do that again. <laughs> Tammy, that was your debut with it this year. <laughs> listen, you threw me off. Uh, so, so listen. <clears throat> Sometimes you've got to change Horses. Just because I started out with you doesn't mean I got to stay with you. Just because we used to be tight doesn't mean we're going to stay tight. Just because I used to support you does not mean I'm going to continue to support you. Look, Lot, look at this. And look at this. They were arguing. You cannot be upgraded by God if you're always arguing with, with people. It is not the will of God for you to be arguing all the time. There's a difference between debating and arguing. We confuse them. Debate the great eternal issues of life. Debate whether you should move. Debate whether you should get married. Debate whether you should divorce. Debate whether you should change careers. But don't argue with people. They were fighting. They both were rich, but now the, the herdsmen, it wasn't Lot and Abram arguing. It was the people who worked for them. Stop letting people around you mess up your good thing. Ouch! Stop letting the people around you make you start cussing. Stop making the people around you make you start doing things you were not raised to do. Stop letting people around you influence you in the wrong way. They're arguing. They're arguing. Tell me, you, you're vice president. You, you've ever seen the co-workers getting some mess, then they bring you the mess? You had nothing to do with it, but now you got to resolve their mess. I need just one person who's paying attention right on the screen. Stop being messy. Stop. Now, you know, a lot of y'all call me petty, but my pettiness is in jokes and playing. You know, I, I'm Dennis the Menace. I'm a little boy. Inside this 58 is a five-year-old. St stop being messy. Stop allowing people to bring you mess. Because people who bring you mess will take mess back to whoever they brought it from. To whoever they brought it from. Now, li listen to this. Li yeah, Tammy said, yes. So now look, listen to this. You, you've got to ask God to make you immune to the mess. <laughs> you know, the, the, so, somebody will be telling my grandma something, and my grandma will go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then they say something that's shocking. She said, mm. And then my grandma said, is that so? She would never give her opinion. My grandma's reaction to mess would be, mm, is that so? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, to my country folk, to to Tammy and to Deaconess Clayton, you ever heard the season saying, "Say, mm hmm, I read him so. Mm, is that so? Is that so? Sometimes when y'all hear mess, you need to say, "Is that so? You you if you don't react, a fool can't argue by himself. An idiot cannot be an idiot by himself. A knucklehead cannot be a knucklehead by themselves. The Bible says they were quarreling." Stop taking bullets for other people. <laughs> Stop taking bullets.
goods for other people. Let me, let me, hey, Constance Jackson and Anita Jackson, stop allowing other people to cause pain in your life. Take charge of your life. You're too old not to be in charge of your life. You're too smart to not be in charge of your life. You're too anointed not to be in charge of your life. Guess who's in control of my life? Me. Now, this, 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 this young lady about to reel me in, but she ain't going to be in charge of my life. <laughs> See, it, stop letting other people pull your string. Stop saying they got on my last nerve. Take your nerves back. <laughs> Somebody, just one person paying attention, right on the screen, I'm taking my nerves back. Come on, put it on the screen. I'm taking my nerves back. Put it on the screen. I'm taking my nerves back. I'm taking my joy back. I'm taking my peace back. I'm taking my smile back. They were quarreling. Quar arguing causes confusion. Arguing leads to guns and fights. The shooting at the parade, horrible argument. Kimberly, I'm taking my nerves back. I'm taking my nerves back. And look at this. So, verse number eight. So, Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between uh, you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Look at this. So, Abe, look, I, want, I want to read verse number eight to y'all. This is how you settle quarreling. This is how you settle arguments. I'm going to read verse eight. Genesis 13, eight, New International Version. So, Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. When somebody is arguing, one of the two people has got to take the high road. <laughs> Can we go find a road emoji? And, and a person, put a person and a, and a road emoji. Person and road emoji. Road emoji and a person emoji. Listen, y'all, take the high road. Know when to take the high road. Know when to be the peacemaker. You can't make other people be peaceful, but you can be peaceful. <laughs> you in control of one person in this world, you. You. Look at this. Abram takes the moral high road. Abram takes the psychological high road. Abram saw where this thing was going. He saw it was getting ready to run into the ditch. So Abram was getting ready to switch horses. What I told you about 10 minutes ago, no one to switch horses. <laughs> Abram is getting ready to unhitch from Lot. <laughs> Lot has been with Abram ever since they left. He was with him in Egypt. He was with him in memory. He was with him in Ai. He was with him in Bethel. But now he's getting ready to unhitch his wagon. Kimberly, go grab the road emoji, the person emoji, and while you're slow, get the temperature thermostat emoji. Y'all, let me help you this morning. Know when the temperature has gotten too hot and it's time for you to leave. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the screen. Know when the temperature has gotten too hot and it's time for you to leave. <laughs> Am I helping somebody? Some of y'all, you knew that the temperature was 100 degrees. And you thought, you, Kimberly, I love it. I love it. That's right. <laughs> Take the high road and test the temperature. I need three people who are paying attention to write on the screen. Temperature check. Temperature check. <laughs> temperature check. Nefertiniti. Temperature check. Isis. Temperature check. Thuakamun. Temperature check. Temperature check. Temperature check. Temperature check. You can't. If a car overheats, it can blow the engine. That's why in your vehicle, whatever you drive this morning, it's got a temperature gauge. It has cold and it has hot. You want it to stay in the middle. You need to take a temperature check of the folk you fooling with. Oh, Kimberly, look at you getting crazy. Kim, you making up for uh, having a cold last week. You got the perfect emoji. I, I want two people to duplicate the emoji Kimberly just put on the, on the, Kimberly, I miss you when you're not here. I want y'all to duplicate, three people to duplicate the emoji Kimberly just put up. Temperature check. If you got more money going out than coming in, you need to do a temperature check. If you are more lazy than you are active, you need to do a temperature check. If you are counting your problems more than you are counting your blessings, you need to do a temperature check. Oh, 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 oh. oh. 
This word is on fire this morning. This word is on fire here in East Atlanta this morning. This word, temple to somebody not obedient. I asked two people, three people to, to, to duplicate Kimra's emoji. The temperature, thermo, temperature, and the, the uh, check. Listen, if you want a better life, do a temperature check. If you want to upgrade, do a temperature check. How does Abram do it? Thank you, Deacon S. Clay. How does it? Thank you, Tammy T. Lee. Uh, that's better than the other emoji. How do you do a temperature check? When you realize something ain't right. <laughs> I know I, my grandmother came home from work. Uh, when she started letting me be, I was mature, mature enough to come home from school. Uh, she would give me a key to the house and I would have to sit in the house, lock the door that she got home. And I did something one day while she was at home, while she was at work. Thank you, Deborah. My grandma came home and said, Kenny, you too quiet. What you done done? Anybody ever heard that season saying, say, you too quiet right now. What you done done? And I kept saying, yes, ma'am. No. She said, don't yes, ma'am. I mean, what you done done? She said, you better tell me because if I find it before you tell me, I'm going to tear your tail up. <laughs> My grandmother had a, I thought she took a thermometer around with her. She knew when I had done something. When things are uncomfortable in your life, do a temperature check. When you're miserable, do a temperature check. When your stress is overwhelming, you do a temperature check. And I'm going to repeat what I just said a few moments ago. Instead of counting your problems, count your blessings. So look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at how Abram resolves the quarreling. He says, let's not argue anymore. No one has time to move on, y'all. Abram said, let's not argue anymore. No one has time to move on. No one has time to cut. No one has time to walk away, Spencer. No one is time to leave a dead weight behind. No one is time to unhitch your horse from the wrong cart. No one is time to unhitch your cart from the wrong horse. So look at what happens in verse number nine. It's not the whole land before you. He said, look, look at all this land. Let's part company. I, verse number nine, let's part company. I want y'all to look in your Bible at verse number nine. Put Write that scripture on the screen. That verse on the screen, Deacon S. Clay, now virtual ambassador. Amazing and virtual ambassador you are. Genesis 13 and 9. Let us part company. If you go to the left, I'll go right. If you go to the right, I'll go to... I'm, I'm going to pick my Bible up and read it to y'all, okay? Genesis, the 13th chapter, verse number nine. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Abram is so smart. I, th th that's right. Something not right, cuz. Abram is so smart. He said, Lot, all this land, we don't need to be fighting. Abram goes psychological. Tell me, you work in the field of psychology. No one to use psychology on people. Look at this. Psychology is not a bad thing. I'm doing a self-study. I love Carl Jung. I love Mootman. Look at it. Mr. Jimmy. Mr. Jimmy. No one to Abram uses psychology. Abram says, look, let's part. You got to know when the relationship is over. You got to know when the marriage is over. You got to know when the job is over. Mr. Jimmy, you got to know, Mr. Jimmy, you missed us at homecoming. Go to my Facebook page. It was a grand reunion. It was as if God teleported us back to our freshman year. Listen, listen, listen. You've got to know when to part ways. You got to, hey, Heather, Heather, I was in New Jersey for a funeral on Bergen Street, St. Paul Baptist Church on Friday, community church. Listen, you got to know when to part ways. You got to know when to cut people loose. You got to know when to cut bad habits loose. Look at this. Abram, he doesn't argue anymore. Arguing must stop at some point. Confusion must stop at some point. <laughs> I need two people atten paying attention right on the screen. Lord, help me to pull the plug. <laughs> help me to pull the plug. You got to know when to pull the plug. Remember the title of the message this morning is Upgrade Cuts. God cannot upgrade you if you stay with the wrong person, if you stay at the wrong job, if you stay in a bad situation. Look at what happens. He says, let us part company. I go to the... Hey, see, when you cut people off, the number, the number one rule is you got to already be confident and comfortable. Abram 
oozes with confidence. I want this part to sink and saturate into your soul and your psyche. Look at Abram's reaction. Look at Heather, Heather Green. Let Lord help me to pull the plug. Heather, how's your daughter doing? Look at this. Look at this. I'll go to the, if you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. Abram is so confident. He said, you can go, if you go left, I'm going to go right. If you go right, I'm going to go left. But either way, you got to get up out of here. You remember what Stuart Scott, the late great frat brother of mine from ESPN said? You ain't got to go home, but you got to get up out of here. Abram is so confident that he will prosper more when Lot leaves. He said, either way you go, I'm going the opposite way, but we ain't going the same way. <laughs> let, let, let me tell, let me tell, let me tell, let me I'm going to help three of y'all this morning. You better let some folk go left. This year and you go right. You better let some folk go right and you go left. The thing here is that Abram, my goddaughter, yes, my goddaughter. I don't even know what state y'all live in, Heather. Aren't you somewhere in Florida? Listen, 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 listen. Abram is so confident. He said, if you go left, I'm going to go right and still grow. If you go right, I'm going to go left and still grow. Give people the option to get on up out of your life. <laughs> I don't care how long you've been with me. It's time for you to go left and I'm going to go right. I don't care how much you love me. You say you love me, but your actions do not show love. I'm going to go right. You go left. Abram knew that either way he went, God was going to bless him. <laughs> your blessing is not always tied to this location. God can bless you over there. But you got to cut the lot in your life. How many of you have wasted many years because you kept lot too long? <laughs> Let me see your hand if you wasted time because you kept lot too long. <laughs> you lost money because you kept lot too long. You lost your sanity, your peace because you kept lot too long. Let lot go. <laughs> Abram is unhitching from his nephew. Family can be the worst. Family can cause you the most headache. Family can be the messes. Fret brother Roger Suggs. Family can be the most aggravating. Lot says, you go right, I'm going left. Some of these co-workers, you need to go left, let them go right. Abram psychologically lays it out because he knows, he knows that wherever I am, God's going to be with me because God made the promise to me. God didn't make a promise to Lot. He made the promise to Abram. Lot was the beneficiary of being around Abram. And now he let somebody else mess his stuff up. Stop letting other people mess your stuff up. Stop letting other folk interrupt your flow. Stop letting other people be vicious to your vibe. <laughs> oh, I'm going to read verse number nine again because I want this to sink and saturate and sin into your soul and your psyche. Verse number nine, 13, Genesis is not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. What lot, What he was saying in everyday terms, terms, <laughs> Deborah said, amen to the family. What he was saying in everyday term was, you ain't staying here no more. <laughs> know when to cut people, know when to put people out, know when to let people go, know when to walk away from an unhealthy situation. Let me come close to the camera. Know when to walk away from an unhealthy situation. Know when to walk away from a toxic situation. Know when, walk, know when to walk away from a non-productive situation. Stop putting your stuff at risk because you are fooling with lot. <laughs> I need two people who are paying attention because I only feel like two of y'all paying attention. I need two people to write on the screen. Lot must go. <laughs> Lot must go. That's right, Deacon S. Clay. You got to go. That's right, Kimberly. I knew you gambled in Vegas, Kimberly, when you went out there with your girlfriend two years ago because you said, know when to hold them, when to fold them. Kimberly, where's the money you won so I can bless it? Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the right. Mr. Jimmy, Lot must go. Tammy, Lot must go. German, Lot must go. Now look at this. Look at this. Verse number 10, Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zoar was well watered like the garden of the Lord, a reference to the garden of Eden, like Egypt. So Egypt with these beautiful black people right behind me, Egypt, Egypt. Can you believe I packed all this stuff in a suitcase and shipped it home with me when I was in Egypt in 2018? Now listen, this was before the Lord destroyed Simon and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan set out to the east. 
So Lot decides to go to the east. He chose for himself. There's no indication that it says Lot prayed. There's no indication that it says Lot asked the Lord where to go. If you don't include God in the plan, the plan ain't going to work out. Because you're going to see chapters later that Lot and his wife are in Sodom and Gomorrah with all this cray cray going on. Look at this. Look at this. Lot chose for himself. Look at here. It, verse number 11. The two men parted. Come, this is the third time in this story that the writer, the Elohist writer, the Yahweh writer, whoever composed and compiles the book of Genesis. This is the third time he says, that's right. Lot must go, Constance. Lot would be a great character. <laughs> Heather, you remember me doing the character preaching? Gosh, oh, and Peter, that was my favorite one that I played. So li listen, listen, at Side Rock Baptist Church, Chancellor Avenue, Irvington, New Jersey. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Look at this, the two men parted company. This is the third time that the Yahweh's writer, the Elohim's writer who composed and compiles the book of Genesis, he says the two men parted. Some people simply cannot stay with you. Let them go. Let them go. Some people are meant to be in your life temporarily. Stop trying, stop trying to make permanent what's supposed to be temporary. That, that, that should have been an explosive statement to somebody. Stop trying to make what's permanent that's only temporary. <laughs> There's a difference between a one night stand and a lifetime of love. <laughs> I know Ray Parker Jr. said I slipped and fell in love. A one night stand turned into a romance. So you, you, there's a difference between a one night stand and a long time love. A one night stand is temporary. A long time love is 44 years of marriage like the Claytons. So, oh, oh. Look, I want to emphasize in, in this verse one more time. The two men party company. You can't stay with everybody. Your spirit is not meant to get along with everybody. This is why the Bible says, John, jo Johanna literature, he says, try the spirit by the spirit. That's why a baby will not gravitate towards certain people because that baby can pick up the spirit. A baby is the most innocent individual in the world. A baby picks up bad spirits. I'm going to say it again. The two men parted company. Who is the lot in your life with this morning that you need to part company with? Don't write their name on it. On, on, this is a this is a this is a uh, rhetorical question. Who is the lot in your life with right now that you need to park? You cannot be upgraded by God till you get rid of lot. You cannot go to the next phase, the next stage, the next level until you get rid of lot. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Verse two. Now, no, I'm, 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 let me put the key. Mr. Jimmy like to play golf. Let me put the ball on the tee and knock it in the fairway for you. We have not yet heard from God. <laughs> God let this thing play out. God lets this. We don't hear one word from God in this passage yet. We have not heard from God. We have not smelled God. The only reference to God is when it says Abram, when he left Egypt, he got to memory and he prayed, called upon the name of the Lord. He called Mr. Jimmy, Mr. Jimmy, Mr. Jimmy, where is Shay Monkey? Is Shay Monkey still in Tampa? Listen to this. Listen to this. Look at this. Verse 12. Now, I, I want you to hear this. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Abram lived in the land of Canaan while Lot lived among the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, verse 14. Remember, <laughs> Heather, I'm trying. You better pray for your friend of many decades. Listen, listen. Heather, you and, you and Mr. Jimmy better get an offering when I call for the offering at the end of this service. <laughs> listen, listen. Verse 14. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, look around where you are to the north, to the south, and the east, and the west. All the land that you see, I'm going to give that to your offspring forever. Listen, listen. God did not speak to Abram until he cut Lot. <laughs> <laughs> God does not speak to Abram until he cuts Lot. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you something you've never heard a preacher say before. If you have, good for you. If you haven't, welcome. You are blocking God from talking to you because you won't cut Lot. <laughs> God's got your blessings in a holding pattern because you refuse to cut Lot. You're not 
where you need to completely be because God ain't letting nothing happen until you cut lot. <laughs> My least airport to fly into is Newark International, EWR. But Heather, I'm very impressed because that was my first time flying in since COVID. And Terminal A in Newark is amazing. Of course, I was in the Delta Terminal. And Heather, I owe you an apology. Airbus, back when you flew for uh, Continental, I used to always dog out uh, Airbus for Boeing. All I fly now are the Delta uh, Airbuses. So li 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 listen, 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 listen. We were supposed to leave uh, Newark on Friday at uh, 2.56. Uh, I'm sorry, 236. The plane didn't lead to 310. We were in a holding pattern, a ground stoppage because of the plane leaving from Atlanta. A ground stoppage. What God has done to some of y'all, he's called a ground stoppage because you won't cut lot. <laughs> Let me see your hand if, if I'm on fire with that point right there, boy. Let me tell you something. God blocks. God calls a ground stoppage. Because you won't cut like God has not spoken. He lets the argument play out. But as soon as Abram cuts lot, God speaks. The Lord said to Abram, after lot had parted. <laughs> Deacon has put that scripture on the screen. Uh, Genesis 13, 14. The Lord said to Abram, uh, Kimberly, put up that fire emoji for Heather. Heather, welcome to our emoji ministry. Kimberly, throw up that fire emoji. She, she said, I'm on fire. May God be glorified. Verse 14, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot, maybe the Kareem, my brother in Egypt. Kareem, look behind me. Kareem, look at all of my Egyptian collection. Um, Kareem, Kareem was one of my tour guides in Egypt, in Cairo, out in Memphis. We were in Memphis. He took me to see that great statue of Ramesses II. Kareem, when are you going to open the Grand Egyptian Museum so I can return to Egypt and see the largest uh, archaeological museum in the world? L listen, listen, listen. After he had cut Lot, after he had cut parted Lot, he said, look around to the north. Of he said, I'm getting ready to make you richer. Oh, let me read this. All the land that you see, I'm going to give that to you and your offspring. I'll make your offspring like the dust of the earth. If they can count the dust, they can count your offspring. Look at this. God cannot upgrade you until you get away from Lot. It is not the will of God for you to be broke. It is the will of God for you to have unlimited supply. It is the will of God for you to have unlimited dis, uh, uh, blessings. Manage what you got and God will add to that. It's the will of God. For Joy Chronic Thurman, so glad to have you. Joy, I got a surprise for you on my cell phone. Joy, do you remember this lady right here? Who helped to raise you? Do you remember her working for your parents? Look, look, look. My grandmother was a nanny to, to Joy. Joy is my dear friend in Washington. Look at this. It is the will of God. It's not the will of God for you to be broke. It's not the will of God for you to live from check to check. The Bible says God gave Abram an expansion plan. <laughs> I need two people who are paying attention to writing the screen. God has an expansion plan for me. God has an expansion plan for me. God does not expand Abram until he cuts a lot. Lot will stunt the growth in your life. Lot will block blessings. Lot will hold you back. How? Let me see your hand if you've allowed Lot to hold you back at some point in your life. God comes with an expansion plan. To He said, Abram, I'm getting ready to upgrade you because you cut Lot. <laughs> That's right, German, self-imposed ground stoppage. God, Kimberly, God has an expansion plan for you. Yes. Tammy, God, Tammy. You are living proof that God has an expansion plan. You started as a temp employee at your job, and now you're the freaking vice president of your job? Expansion plan. But y'all, you can't get to your expansion plan until you cut lot. God is silent until lot is cut. See, some things God lets you work out before he steps in. <laughs> God, God says to Abram, God says to Abram, he says, Abram, I'm going to let you be the Mamre Canaan stock market. Hey, look, Abram, I'm going to make you the Warren Buffett of Canaan. Abram, I'm going to make you the Bill Gates of Canaan. It is always the will of God to expand you, but you got to cut a lot first. That's why the theme of our church for 2024 is the year of upgrades. God wants to upgrade you, but you got to get rid of a lot. 
Look at this. He says, your offspring going to benefit from this. Generational wealth. Somebody type on the screen, generational wealth. One thing I like about the Jewish nation, they set up generational wealth. One thing I like about the Chinese, they set up generational wealth. When I first moved to Atlanta in 88 to go to the Morehouse School of Religion for my Master's of Divinity, I, I, I knew there was a neighborhood where about 20 Chinese packed into a three-bedroom apartment. 20. 20. And now they own that area. They got about eight or nine different restaurants. Level up 24. Generational wealth. Generational wealth. Think about what you want to leave your children, your grandchildren, unless your children cray cray. But generational. Generational. When we, when you, when we do your funeral or you come to my funeral, you should have left something. Generational. He says, Abram, this thing going to go beyond you. God doesn't even talk generational wealth with him until he cuts light. <laughs> I'm going to ask a rhetorical question. Let me see your hand if you've allowed Lot at one season of your life to mess up your money. <laughs> Abraham is already rich, but God's going to add to what he's got. Deacon Carlos Mitchell, God wants to add to what you got. Heather, God wants to add to what you got. Tammy, vice president is not your last stop. God wants to add to what you got. Kimberly, God wants to add to what you got. Deborah, God wants to add to what you got. German, God wants to add to what you got. Kinesia, God wants to add to what you got. God says, generational wealth. Now, let, let me tell you something. God, all when you cut lot, and when God gets ready to upgrade you, God always gives you a preview. And look, God's expansion in your life is not tied to your age. Abram is 75 years old when he meets God. If you're not 75 yet, your best blessing hadn't met you yet. Ah, oh, look at Kim with that emoji right there. Receive it, Sister Heather. Look at that, look at that emoji. Stop, block, lot, stop, lot. Look, look, look at this, no lot. Look at this. God always gives you a preview of what he's going to do. That's why you will have certain dreams because God is using a dream to give you a preview. That's why you can be walking in the middle of the day and have a vision about your life because God's trying to give you a preview. Dreams, according to Dr. Carl Jung and, and, and Mootman and, and Dr. Aaron Beck, dreams are a way in which God is speaking to us about what's coming. So God gives him a preview. Here's a preview in verse 17. In verse number 17. This is what God tells Abram. Go walk through the length and the breadth of the land that I'm giving to you. Ain't nothing built on it yet. Mallory Miller, Miller Jr. Uh, nothing is built on it, but God said, go walk it out. <laughs> look at, look, but let me read verse 17. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land for I am giving it to you. God says, Abram, since you cut lot. I'm, it's, it's an upgrade cut. I want you to walk through the land and get a feel for what I'm about to do. Let me tell y'all this morning, if you want to get some upgrades in your life, you got to cut lot. And when you cut lot, you got to walk it out. He said, Abram, if you walk to the left, that's yours. Abram, if you walk to the right, that's yours. Abram, if you step back, that's yours. Abram, if you walk forward, that's yours. Look at God gave him a preview. Heather, be ready for the preview. Kimberly, look for the preview. Deaconess Clayton, look for the preview. You can have it all if you just cut lot. You can go where you want to go if you just cut lot. You can do what you want to do if you cut lot. And then when you cut lot, God says, walk it out. <laughs> walk it out. How did, the, how did the walls of Jericho come down a generation, two generations later? They walked around and they marched until the walls came down. I need you to go walk your stuff out. If there's a car you want to buy, go to the car lot and walk around that car and watch it end up in your garage. If there's a house that you want to get, go walk around that house and watch you get a loan to buy that house. Oh, oh, oh. You got to walk it out. You got to work it out. You got to believe it out. You got to shout it out. You got to worship it out. It hadn't happened yet, but it's on the way for Lot, on the way for Abram. Because look at what happens in verse number 18. You need to react when God tells you to walk it out. So verse 18, so Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. So I like that emoji, Kim. So what Abram does is he walks it out and then he worships it out. <laughs> Somebody missed your shout. Somebody missed your hallelujah. He walked it out and then he shouted it out. He walked it out. That's right. Cutting and then walking, Tammy. He walked it out and then he shouted it out. He saw it coming and he began to shout. He began to worship. I want to tell somebody before I close, you need to practice advanced worship. What is advanced worship, Dr. Walker? Advanced worship is I'm shouting before I get it. Advanced worship is I'm believing before I get the car. Advanced worship
worship is. I got a vision in my head and I'm shouting because it's coming to pass. I had a dream last night and I'm shouting because it's coming to pass. I cut a lot and now I'm worshiping. I cut a lot and now I'm walking it out. I cut a lot and now I'm worshiping. Did anybody come to worship this morning? Did anybody, anybody, anybody come to praise the Lord this morning? I'm going to get my upgrade because I'm smart enough to cut a lot and after I cut a lot, I'm going to hear from God. And after I cut a lot, everything that was blocked is now mine. It's now mine. I got a peace of mind. I got a new joy. I got a new car. I got a new attitude. I got a new relationship. It's mine. It's mine. I dare you this month. I dare you before the end of the month to just walk it out and then pray it out. Walk it out and shout it out. Walk it out and worship it out. What a story. Upgrade cuts. Upgrade cuts. With all that Abram has, God wants to give him more. But God cannot give him more until he cuts a lot. I need you to take a panoramic perspective of your life after this service is over. And I want you to think about who is my lot. And then I need you to let lot go left and you go right. I need you to go right and then let lot go left. And then Constance Jackson, you will hear from God. Because after Abram cuts Lot, God says, I'm about to blow you up. Abram, I'm about to upgrade you to a level you've never been upgraded to in your entire life. Father God, give us the strength to make Lot cuts. Lord, give us the discernment to know when to cut light. Lot. Lord, let us walk into the room. And check the temperature. Lord, let us do temperature checks. Lord, thank you that you lose stuff when we cut lot. Thank you that you move when we cut lot. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you because it is in you that Paul says we move and have our being. So God, let us make the necessary cuts to get the upgrades that you desire. Lord, give us more so that we can leave generational wealth. In your name we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Wow. Deacon Mitchell says, wow, man. Oh, man. You spoke to my life today and confirmed my confinement. Woo! Deacon Mitchell, then it's up to you to cut lot and go get it. Notice the last action of Abram after he walks it out. He prays. <laughs> he prays. Father, we thank you for the tithes today. We thank you for the offering. Bless the giver. Give it back to them. May men give to them. Press down, shaking over and running over. Meet all of their needs. Mentally, financially, psychologically, emotionally. In Jesus' name, amen. There are three ways which you can give to the ministry today. The first way you can give, go to Cash App, Augustus Ministries. Put that on the screen for us, please, Deaconess. Cash App, Augustus Ministries. The second way you can give, go to the church website, www. Temple of Faith Bible Church dot org online giving select PayPal in the drop down menu. Or you can do what Uncle John did before worship began and he gave on the Giveify app. The Giveify app is Temple of Faith Bible Church. Temple of Faith Bible Church. First way to give, Cash App Augustus Ministries. Second way to give, go to the Giveify app, Temple of Faith Bible Church. Third way to give, church website www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org online giving PayPal, online giving PayPal. Did, did the word of God bless you today? Just let me see one hand if the word of God bless you today. Look, y'all, if you're going to get these upgrades, never in my life have I preached a series this long. I mean, start on watch night because God said 2024 will be the year of upgrades. And every Sunday we've been preaching upgrades. Every Wednesday night uh, uh, we've been preaching upgrades. Yes, Heather, she's going to, I'll put it up there because Deaconess is trying to do some other stuff. I'll put the cash up there for you. But this upgrade, ah, Tammy said his upgrade series is blessing her. Kimberly says he's blessing her. Uh, Constance says he's blessing her. May God be glorified. I've never done what I'm doing now in my entire life. I, God has upgraded me to do this kind of series. I'm going to put it up now, Heather, so just hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to get that money out of Florida for y'all spend it on Deacon Mitchell's boat. Okay, it should be popping up on the screen now. 
It should be coming up on the screen. And, uh, there it is. That, that's the cash app, Augustus Ministries. Um, Deacon Mitchell and Heather, what part of Florida do y'all live in? Um, Deacon Mitchell, I, I, uh, the only place I dive in the United States is in Florida. I dive in Key Largo and then uh, the Florida Keys. And last, last time, uh, I dive. <laughs> Oh, it's up there, Heather. And last time I dove West Palm and Singer, I, Orlando, Mickey, Minnie. Oh, you got great weather. My vice president of my fraternity, my one of my closest friends, uh, Attorney Cecil Howard, he's now the acting dean at the law school for FAMU. FAMU's law school is actually in Orlando. It's not at, in Tallahassee. He's a new dean there. Do y'all see the Cash App Augustus Ministers on the screen? The Cash App Augustus Ministers on the screen? So, Mr. Jim, the next time I'm down in Florida... But but see you on a different coast. I'm down West Palm is on the other side. That's way opposite of you. That's right. God loves a cheerful giver. So give, German. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Did you, did you commission y'all see the cash out? Because I don't want you to spend all that money down there with Governor DeSantis in Florida. I want you to send it to Atlanta. Did you get the cash out, Heather? Yes or no? Did you get it? Look, uh Wednesday night, join me at 7 p.m. for wonderful Wednesday night night. That's the Rick, Rick folks. <laughs> that is the Rick. Yeah, that is true. That's true. Uh, that is very true. West Palm, uh, Peanut Beach, all of that. Um, Wednesday night, join me at 7 p.m. for wonderful Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Uh, no street ministry this weekend. Uh, actually, I will be out of the country, but uh, next Sunday, 7 o'clock. Um, uh, next Sunday, 11 a.m. 10, huh, man, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Bible study. Sunday morning, uh, 9 a.m. worship service. We'll continue our series on Wednesday night with upgrades, Bible study. Then Sunday we'll be preaching about uh, upgrades. Again, we pray for the mother. We pray when we came on. We pray for the mother of Deborah Holloman who worshiped with us in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, and also we pray for Deacon uh, Clayton and Mrs. Deacon Clayton's wife as he goes to uh, Detroit with his wife to see his mother. Uh, y'all be careful driving to Detroit today. Please text me to let me know when y'all um, get there. I'm going to feed my uncle, and then you know the rest of my Sunday rich. I'm going to sleep for a few hours and get back up. Uh, Heather and Deacon Mitchell, it was great to have you guys worship with us uh, from Orlando. Mallory Miller Sr., uh, Junior in Augusta, Georgia, Tracy Acre in Real, Georgia. We had so many new visitors in today, so thank you. Yes, Kim, you have a Sunday, a great one too. Okay, repeat the watch word after me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a remix on it. May the Lord help me to make upgrade cuts and get rid, rid of a lot. May he watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're welcome for the prayers. Please keep me posted. I have an extraordinary long week. Uh, with, I'm hosting a fundraiser for the Alpha Pack. My business, the Augustus Group, I have several high client, high level meetings for clients this week. Then I'm jumping on a plane on Friday, coming back later. Uh, so pray for me as well. But I, I, I'm saying all that to say, Deacon S. Clayton, please keep me updated on your mother-in-law. And Deborah, please keep me updated on your mother. Okay, I love you guys. May God bless you. Thank everybody for the offering. Wednesday night, 7 p.m., wonderful Wednesday night. Bible says Friday morning, 7 a.m., fresh Friday prayer call. Sunday morning, 9 a.m., worship, worship. God bless each of you.